All right, let's talk about services on Linux. So first of all, I'll go ahead and start up a terminal and we'll make this terminal a little wider so we can see a little bit more information. And if I type in the command systemctl, then I can see a bunch of information. And we don't know what it is. You can press the arrows to scroll up and down. You can press the space if you want to jump down a bunch. And you can press Q to quit out of it. Let me clear. All right. So system CTL is part of system D. And system D is actually on multiple versions of Linux now. It used to be that everything was on um, init. But now they're using system D. So how do we do things with it? Well, let's figure out, first of all, what services we have. So system CTL, and I can do a type equals service, and I can get a dash dash type service, and I can get a list of services that are running. So you can see these services. And one of them that I think is important is the SSH service. So it's the secure shell service. It makes management possible remotely. So let's take a look at what's going on here. There are lots of different commands. So you can do a status with sshd. And it will tell you a little bit about the service running. It tells you the name of the service. So it's actually sshd.service. Gives a brief description. And you can see which file is being loaded. So there is this user lib systemd system ssh.d.service that is being loaded. You can see that it is enabled and the preset for when it comes is enabled. So what does enabled mean? Well, enabled means that when you start up your system, it is set to start automatically. The preset means that when ssh D was installed, the default behavior is to be enabled. We can see that it is currently active and it has been active ever since this time right here, which was 10 minutes ago. So my machine's been up for 10 minutes. You can see there is something about documentation for it. You can see the SSH documents in either manual 8 or manual 5. So you can type in man 8 SSHD or man. 5 SSHD underscore config. You can see that it is currently running as a PID number 1517. And you can see the number of tasks. You can see how much memory it's consuming and CPU information here. All right. Then you can see information about how it started up. Sometimes when you are listing your log information, you need to type in a minus L to get more than just what's listed here. But we can see it's listening both on the IP version 4, port 22, and the IP version 6, port 22. So it's listening on both of those, and so it's up. Now, you could also go verify in other ways as well. For example, if you did a net stat minus I like tuna, you can get a list of what's running. So you can see that you have your 22 uh, running on the IP version 4, and it's also running on IP version 6. If you add a P to my tuna, then you can see what process or program name is running. It doesn't say anything here, which makes it less useful. Um, if I take out the T, which is uh, or actually the N, take out the N, then I can just see it without the numbers and more names. And so you can see that SSH is running right here. And you can see it's running right here. So you can verify it with netstat. Just figure out your right text um, argument flag configuration, the right incantation to get what you want. All right. So this service is running. Well, if I wanted to stop the service, I could do that as well. So I do system CTL stop SSHD and it, well, it requires my password right here. So I punch in my password and then it stops it. I could also do a sudo command instead, which 
then prompts me for a password. And the next time I run it, it doesn't actually prompt me for a password. So if I do a status again, then you can see that it is enabled still. It's preset is still enabled. However, it is no longer active. It is inactive or dead. And it's been dead for 15 seconds. If I wanted to start it back up again, I could change this to a start. And maybe do a sudo command so it doesn't have to prompt me. And I can start it up. And then I can do the status again. And you can see that it is, in fact, running. And it's back up and going again. If I made some configuration changes, I could do a restart. So restart, um, well, we'll do a stop and then a start to restart it. And I can go look at the status again, and I can see that it is up and it's been up for six seconds ever since my restart. Sometimes you can do a reload. A reload is like a restart sometimes, but not quite the same thing. What happens here is you tell the service um, through a signal that the service needs to be reloaded and some services will do a reload. And if you look at the status again, you can see that it is been up for 39 seconds, which is not what would have happened if it would have been stopping and starting again. But it does do a information here where you can see there was an exec reload and the kill command doesn't actually kill it. It actually sends a signal. So it sent a signal telling it to reload. So it translates this minus hop signal as a reload signal. And then it sends the PID over there. So it connects to the PID to tell it to reload and so SSH is actually responsible for its own reload at that point. All right we talked a little bit about enable and we see it right here. What happens if we want it to not start on boot time? Well I could do a system CTL and do a disable. So run a sudo command sudo system CTL disable and then it will not start automatically. So it removes a symbolic link that points to this file. And so this right here, in this etc systemd system multi-user.target directory, multi-user.target.wants directory, there is an sshd.service symbolic link that was there that pointed to the actual symbolic or the actual file, which is listed right here. And so what happened is when it loaded, it looked in this directory, it found all of the services that needed to be started, and then it went ahead and started them. So we can actually take a look at that directory and see what's there. So I can do an ls minus al and pass in this middle click, oops, um, this directory. And then take a look and you can see these are all of the symbolic links for all the services that are going to be started automatically in the multi-user target run level. So that's what it wants to have running. So all these things get started automatically. And you can see how they're mapped as well. So if I go ahead and re-enable this thing, so it changes from disable to enable, Then it adds the symbolic link in there, which points to the actual service file right here. And we can take a look at the directory and you can see that the SSH file should now appear right here. So what is in this file right here? Well, if we take a look at this file, we can figure out how it starts up. So we'll do a less on this file. And Oops. And now we can take a look at the contents of the file. We can see it has a unit section where it describes what it is. So it is open SSH server daemon. And if we remember from the status, it did list this description. You have your documentation and you can remember that it did list the documentation. 
and it has information. It says, well, it's after these ones. So that means you want your network to start first and you want to make sure that you have your keys generated first. It wants the keys generated first thing taken care of. And then you can see information about the service. So it's got a bit of information here, a type, environment file. It has your start command. It has your reload command. It has your kill information, all these things in there. And then it also says where it's wanted. It says that if you're using the multi-user target, it should install there so it starts automatically because that's the default that we have. What if we don't know if SSHD is installed? Well, we can do a status, so systemctl status SSHD and it does tell us that it is enabled. If we disable it, then we should be able to see that it says that it's not enabled. And so I go take a look at that, and I can see that it is disabled. Now, what if I want to just know if it's enabled or disabled? I can do that too. I can do is enabled SSH and it says it's disabled. If I re-enable it again, uh, right there, re-enable it, and run that is enabled command again, it says that it is enabled. If I want to see if it's running, we could do, look at that too. So I do system or system CTL is running as HD, and you can see that it is unknown command where is running actually it's is active is active so I can see that it, it is in fact active and if I do a a stop on it so do stop SHD um, and I look at it again it says that it is inactive so at this point I can go ahead and start the service again And I can see that it is active again. So this should help you when you are trying to figure out how to start and stop services, get them going, get them running, and how to use them when you're setting up services and trying things out.